The subject which has most interested me for many, many years is the simple question, who or what am I? What do we mean by the word I? And I find, as I investigate this question and talk with all kinds of people, that generally speaking, the word I refers to something that we sense or experience as a center of consciousness and decision living somewhere inside a bag of skin. Common speech reflects this in many ways. We say, face facts. We talk about being confronted with reality and we talk about the difference between the knower and the known, the subjective and the objective, the internal thinker and feeler facing an external world. We say, I came into this world. I find there is therefore a general sense that I am something to which this external world is a stranger. That there is a feeling that there's deep hostility between the subject and the object. And this again reflects itself in our common language where we talk about the conquest of nature, the conquest of space, and the conquest of great mountains like Everest. And all that this adds up to is that the human being uh, experiences himself to be very lonely and feels that death is a terrifying threat because he's been brought up in our kind of society and our kind of culture to experience himself as something isolated. Let's review this historically because we shall see <coughs> that in Western civilization we have been in the past 2,000 years under the influence of two great myths. When I use the word myth, I don't mean a kind of false story. The way I use the word myth is to signify an image, a great symbol. Men use symbols to make sense of the world. And there are, uh, we keep changing our symbols and different cultures have different symbols. But a myth is an idea or an, uh, generally an image which we use to explain the world and our own lives. So then, Western man has had two great images. The first image is that the world is the handiwork of a creator king, the Lord God. We are his creatures and he has made us in rather the same way that a potter makes pots or a carpenter makes tables. In the book of Genesis, the creation of Adam is described in terms of ceramics because the Lord God fashions a figurine out of the dust of the earth, that is to say out of clay, and then having made this little figure of a man, he breathes the breath of life into its nostrils and the man becomes alive. And it's not insignificant in this line of tradition that Jesus is the son of a carpenter. 